Hi there. This is a special short video looking at two alternative measures of income inequality. You may already be familiar with the concept of the Gini coefficient, and that's perhaps the most widely used measure of inequality, particularly amongst student economists. But let me uh, throw your way two alternative measures that might tell us something interesting about income inequality across different countries. The first is the SATS20 quintile ratio. What this is, is we take the incomes of the richest 20% of the population and we divide by the incomes of the poorest bit or the poorest 20% of households. And we get what's called the SATS20 quintile ratio. The higher is that ratio, the greater is the gap between top and bottom. Well, what does the data look like for the UK? This chart shows the ratio of the equivalised disposable incomes of the richest fifth of the population to the, that of the poorest fifth of the population. And we can see the ratio is you know, significantly more than one. It started off at four in 1977. And by the late 1980s, uh, early 1990s, it was above six. So the richest 20% were earning after taxes and benefits more than six times the income of the bottom 20%. Now, since then, it's ebbed and flowed, it's, it's, it's risen and fallen, but on, in average terms, the S80 S20 ratio has come down for the UK. It's now just below five for the UK. I'll put that in some context for you with other countries in just a second or two, but think of that number for the UK, the S80 S20 ratio, uh, for disposable income is five. Our second measure of income inequality is quite a new one for many students and teachers, and that is something called the Palmer Ratio. Now the Palmer Ratio is a slightly subtly different calculation. And don't worry, you won't be asked to make this calculation in the exam, it's just something useful to be aware of. It takes the ratio of the richest 10% of the population in other words, the top decile, their share of the national income, and divides it by the poorest 40% share. Okay, so it's the richest 10% income share divided by the poorest 40% income share. And again, you get a number, the higher is that number, the greater is the income inequality. So, this data is for 2014, it's pretty much the, the latest data I can show you, writing at the end of 2016. These are the countries in the world with the highest income inequality. The highest Gini coefficient is the Seychelles, 65.8. Uh, but it's not the highest income inequality by the quintile measure, that dubious honour falls to South Africa, where the income of the top fifth is nearly 30 times higher than the average income of the bottom fifth. And countries like Haiti and Honduras also have incredibly high levels according to that measure. The highest Palmer ratio measure is again South Africa, a measure of eight. In other words, in South Africa, the top 10% of households earn eight times more, eight times more the income of the bottom 40%. Little wonder that South Africa, by most of these measures, is the country with the highest inequality in the world. Do you remember the quintile ratio I, I quoted you for the UK? It was five for disposable income. Well, these countries clearly have hugely bigger income inequality according to that measure. Now, the countries with the lowest income inequality, as you can see, all of these countries have a quintile ratio below five, are shown in this table. And the country with the lowest income inequality in 2014 was the Ukraine, the upper middle income country of Ukraine. Quintile ratio 3.4, Palmer ratio 0.9. All of these countries have a Palmer ratio of one or less. And the Gini coefficient, which is very low by international standards, 24.8 or 0.248. And these countries typically, uh, not always low income countries, uh, not always sorry, super high income countries, um, Belarus, you know, Ukraine, Romania, uh, the per capita incomes are significantly lower than Netherlands and Norway and Iceland. But these are the countries, according to the published data, that have the lowest 
income inequality according to these, these measures. So the Gini coefficient is the most widely used, but hopefully, uh, as a result of watching this short video, you'll just have a couple of other alternative measures of income inequality that you might be able to put into an essay or a data response question. Okay, thank you.